Hello my soccer universe. As I've announced multiple times on my channel, I was yesterday at the Austria Norway game in Linz. It ended with a 5-1 win of Austria, an unbelievable game. And I thought I'd give you a little bit of a personal account of how that game went. We'll talk more about the Nations League besides that game on Wednesday, of course. And you also get my daily short videos summarizing briefly the results. However, let's go a little bit more personal. With this being in Linz and me being a last season ticket holder, you have the option to get tickets for Austria games a little bit sooner than the public. The game, after it went to public sale, was sold out within 25 minutes. This tells you the Austrian national team is really popular at the moment. Of course, they performed really well at the Euros. So, therefore, you would expect them to sell out rather quickly and with only 16,500 seats. Yeah, that's... Sounds about right. This also came on the back of beating Kazakhstan 4-0. I decided to forego that game. I also had the chance to get tickets for that one. But you know, it's midweek and so on. And in the end, it was actually smart because I was not feeling all that well last week. So probably going out to the stadium on a rainy night would not have been great. It also rained in the morning of Sunday. Fortunately, the weather was fine. It cleared up. It actually was quite a nice evening. Very cool you might say even nippy if you like but it was a nice evening to watch a game the only thing that annoyed me is you know this would have been my outfit for the game but it was cold enough that i had to pull a jacket over so my beautiful austria jacket was not seen so i'm deciding to show off my outfit in this video yes the scarf was seen this is actually a really really old scarf from the late 90s where they had this little weird mascot here which looks so bad but you know it's fine. It's one of the Austria scarves heads. Speaking of scarves, when I got to the stadium, I actually was thinking, you know, maybe I should get an Austria-Norway scarf because, you know, I have this one from the Austria-Sweden game in 97 where they qualified still. One of my fondest memory. Great goal by Andy Herzog. Would have been nice to get a match scarf. I didn't see any, although there were people that had them. Yeah, probably should have asked, but I didn't bother with it as well. So went in, I saw there was a huge line because it's a European game. So everyone needs to be checked. It took me actually, I think around 15 minutes to get inside of the stadium, but you know, it was not bad. And this time I went by myself. Why? Yeah, it's a school night. You know, kids have to go to school on Monday morning. My wife doesn't like really late games either. I have decided, okay, this is Norway. And when I bought it, it was yeah, Erling Haaland and Martin Oedegaard coming, of course, in the first game between Austria and Norway that Austria lost. Martin Oedegaard got an injury, so he was out for the game. But you know, there were still quite some good Norway players in the lineup. I mean, Alexander Serloff is another big star. There's Nusa, there's Riesen. However, it was all more or less about Erling Haaland. Nice post also, social post by the Austrian police with Erling Holland on the airport and said, yes, you get it easily, behave yourself, you will be very well kept by the Austrian defense, and if you don't score, we'll get you out easily as well. Kind of, you know, a little bit. As always for Austrian games, the atmosphere is usually great, but you know, it's this overexcited, we need to get the people behind Austria atmosphere. It's not very organic, there's a whole lot of music being played not always a fan of that too, be honest, because I like to develop it, but you know, I give you here a little taste. <laughs> have to say I really like the jersey matchup. I was partly hoping that Austria played white and Norway in red because I really like those red Norway jerseys. But I gotta say these away jerseys paired with the blue pants that looked really 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 nice. Yes this is a jersey I would like to have in a way. Also inspired me I probably should do a video and maybe you know let's see if it is Tuesday or Thursday a little video on national team jerseys that I currently really like that we have not seen at the Euros or at the Copa America. I think this might be a good video also to make because you know 
watching a few there were some there's some really nice european jerseys out there that i want to at least give a little bit of a light let's talk about the game you know Austria knew that they had to go in with a lot of energy. This is what Ralf Rangnick was demanding from the Austrian national team because that's what they were missing in Norway. And they went in with a lot of energy, put Norway on the back foot. However, the first chance actually fell to Erling Haaland when he got on the one-on-one -on -one with the Austrian defense, kind of forgotten, takes a shot and it goes on the inside of the post. Big let off in the sixth minute. Two minutes later, it was Baumgarten who played it onto Anatovic, who with one touch controls the ball, takes it forward and from the edge of the box by the inside of the bar into that beautiful goal. A goal that I almost missed because despite me being on the seating section, I was sitting next to the only two guys that were standing in the seating section and while I was in the first row of the upper tier. The problem is they were just next to me in my sideline so I was leaning forward I asked them you know can you go a little bit back in the end one of them suggested you know let's exchange seats and we exchanged seats literally just before the goal went in I mean I turned around and boom I was about to sit down the goal goes in yeah that is it Austrian and kept up the pressure but the longer the game went on I felt that Norway actually got well in the game created maybe even more chances I mean Austria if they would have played it a little bit more calm and a little bit more controlled they could have played Norway off the park in the first half already. However, they didn't do that. And so the more concrete chances fell actually to Norway. And they got an equalizer from a free kick where Sirloth is completely forgotten. Yes, Patrick Pence is a little bit too far out of the goal. And then he doesn't go for the ball. And Sirloth has a free header into net. It's 1-1. One, one. And the mood kind of was, yes, bravo, Austria, Österreich. But on the other side, it was also, yeah, this is going to be a tough game. No, it was not. Because immediately after the kick of Austria went fully on offensive, already got a penalty within seconds of the kickoff. And here you go. Arnautovic, much maligned Mark Arnautovic, although he's meanwhile really loved in Austria, but you know, in general, everyone looks down and gets a brace against Norway. And this after a start, he was a linchpin up front and it was great to have him there. And that started an Austrian onslaught that within the next 15 minutes, Austria decided the game and most notably, they scored then three headed goals against one of the tallest defenses in Europe. The first one came from a Romano Schmidt corner where Linhardt nicely gets his head on and it falls in the one corner. And then it was a Sabitzer show who just three minutes later, so the three was a 58th minute and a 60 second Sabitzer cross in and Porsche is on the far corner. And also in my glancing header nicely into the left corner from his point of view. 4-1, the game is done. It was also goal difference was important in this one because you know you lost the game in Norway by a goal if you beat them by two goals or more if that's the head-to-head -head, you will definitely win that one and they went out to win this one for sure then in the 69th minute Gregoric came on for Anatovic and more or less with the first touch of the game again a nice a very well timed Sabitzer cross finds Gregoric also on the same far post that where Posh found it and it also glances it in it's 5-1 and after the 5-1, Erling Haaland kind of gathered his team. Let's keep it tight. Norway, at least after the 8th minute, really only went for defending. There were no offensive actions any anymore. And Austria kind of said, yeah, no, we have won it 5-1. The chances were there to make this 6 or 7, to make this a real route. But, you know, there was a little bit needle because of Baumgartner's challenge that injured Oedegaard, although it was not really a foul. There were a little, a few talks from Norway coming ahead of the game. There was also, after the equalizer by Norway, Erling Haaland just yanked the ball, you know, from joy as he is, the big man-child. Yanked the ball almost uh, right into the stands. I mean, it was good that there was a bar before. They tried to tackle Baumgartner. But the referee didn't give a yellow card in the first half. So there was... Uh 
the crowd was not on Norway's side, let's put it this way, and also the team had a little bit of needle, but what I give respect to Ralf Rangnick's team there is that they decided, you know, we're not gonna retaliate, we're gonna give our answer on the field, and an answer they gave, 5-1, could have been more, but it didn't need to be more, this was a resounding win, this was probably and I'm trying really hard to remember now all the Austria games that I've watched live in the stadium. So far, I would have said the Austria-Sweden game, this 1-0, that was a really tough fight. It was an ugly game. I think it was three red cards in there. But beautiful goal by Andy Herzog. This was my favorite so far. But honestly, this one might just be the best Austria game that I've been in person. Because they played so well. And the crowd was rocking. And I was happy to see that. Then... Pro move, since I was alone, I decided, you know, let's salute the players, then let's get home. I had to return my cup, bathroom, out of the stadium. Maybe I can pick up a scarf. Didn't see a scarf uh, afterwards either. And then I had the great idea, you know, I have the phone with me. I can actually at least listen to the post-game coverage, which was also really cool. So I could soak all the impressions from the experts in as well which i think i thought was really nice so yeah great evening what does it mean i mean norway is still first in the table because also slovenia won in kazakhstan so now there are three teams on seven points and the head-to-head -head because norway have played a game more than the other two norway just wins the head-to-head -head between those three teams if Austria should win out, they are for sure first place because they will be ahead of Norway, they will also be ahead of Slovenia then. The next trip is to Kazakhstan, which is the long one. This has me more worried than the home game against Slovenia, to be honest. But I think it looks really good. Austria should qualify from this group in first place. Norway, scary front line, but they have a very weak underbelly in the defense. And that's what Austria exploited to a T. So yeah, hope you enjoyed my impressions from that game. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Although I do them rarely now, I will try to get back to those. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.